other that salvation it is laid right under God for her. And for each and every one of you who are in this place, I thank God for your presence here. For Pastor Elect, I thank God for him and all that he does. Every day, every day, every day, he is showing forth the wisdom of God as God plans the legacy of Hope Church. I thank God for him. And for all of you, for all of you, for all of you who are here, all of you who are watching uh, via social media, we pray that God will speak to you where you are and that our lives will become stronger and better because of this time we spent collectively in his presence. But as always, I'm going to invite you and encourage you to come on and see Jesus with me. I still believe, y'all, I still believe in everything that is in me. If we can learn to see Jesus, we can not give up on looking for and following Jesus, we can make it. Just seeing Jesus, he'll, he'll make a way out of nowhere. He'll still come, it'll still rain, it'll still storm. You might have lightning and thunder in your life, but Jesus will get you through that situation. He'll get you to fair weather. He will get you out. He will do it. He will do it. He will do it. Because he is God. He's promised never to leave us nor forsake us. So if you have your Bibles, let's go to the Old Testament book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 5. Isaiah is writing to a group of people who got themselves in trouble. They have, they've been walking and experiencing the blessings of God so much that they forgot God. And they made some uh, allegiance with, with folk who didn't care nothing about God. And they created idols out of things that God had given them to bless them. They created idols out of their blessings and started to worship the blessing more than the blessed sword. And, and, and God sent the prophet to, to tell them that there's some trouble coming because of that behavior that they continue to, to have, the view that they continue to have. He's warning them of what's about to happen. Isaiah chapter 5. We're just going to uh, read verses 1 uh, through 4. It says, Let me sing for my beloved, my, my love song concerning his memory. My beloved had a vineyard on a very fertile hill. He dug it and cleared it on stones and planted it with choice vines. He built a watchtower in the midst of it and hewed out a wine vat in it. And he looked for it to yield grapes, but it yielded wild grapes. And now inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah Judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I have not done in it? When I looked for it to yield grapes, why did it yield wild grapes? Praise our God. Just for a little while, I want us to consider together the question. What are you asking God? What are you asking God? What's that one thing that you're asking God for? That thing that you feel like, if I just had it, then life would come together. If I just had uh, more money, life would come together. If I just wasn't by myself, God, uh, I could make it. Life would be better. If I just was, was if I just younger, if I had more years, if I was just older, if, what's that one thing? If I had more time, if I had a better job, what's that one thing that, that thing that you, that you say, it, it's holding me back? You, if, if, I, if I just had better health, I, if I just had more, a better way of doing things, then, then my life would come together. I wouldn't go through this. God, I could be faithful to you if I had it. If I had money, if I had time, if I had a house, if I had a job that didn't require me to work on every Sunday, if, if I did if, if, if AU was on a different day, God, I could do it if it wasn't this. What's that one thing that you're asking God for? That you're 
telling God about that think that's a hindrance in your life, keeping you, keeping me from, from doing and being all that God wants us to be and do. What is it? Most of us got it. Most of us got that one thing that if it was just wasn't for this, if it wasn't for what they said, if it wasn't for how they treated me, if it wasn't for what they took from me, if it wasn't for what they did for me, then I would be able to. Most of us have a thing that we go to God for and, and seem like it keeps pulling us back. And we, we say, it, it's not me, God, it's that thing that won't let me be faithful. It ain't me, it's the situation that keep, keep causing a problem in my life. It's the circumstances that keep getting in my way, God. It, it's not me, that's, that's, what, we, that's what we say. We, we treat that thing like Adam and Eve treated the fig leaves. We know it's not sufficient, but it's the best thing we got to hide behind. We, we, we know it don't cover what it's supposed to cover, but it's, it's the one thing that gives us a little shelter from having to admit that the problem is really me. So I, I decide to hide behind my fig leaf of not having enough, not being enough, not knowing enough, not being given enough, not being offered enough. But we can learn from the vine, the vine around the vineyard. We, 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 can, we can learn a lesson from the psalm that, that's being sung here in Isaiah as Isaiah is singing to, to the, a prophecy to the people. We can, we can learn a lesson here. What we, we would discover is God does have expectations. Okay. You see, we, 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 we treat God like whatever we give God, he ought to be satisfied with. Yeah. We treat God like I did my best, I tried my best, I gave my all, and therefore God ought to be satisfied because I did what I called my best. Yeah. But we learn from here that God has expectations because God says, I wanted grace and you gave me wild grace. Yeah. There, there was an expectation that the vineyard would create and produce grace. Yeah. Not, not that it would work hard, not that it would do its best, all that it had to give, but that it would produce grace. Yeah, yeah. So when we come to God and, and the face of God's expectations on our lives, we start offering excuses like, God, I did my best. Okay. God, I tried. Okay. I gave all that I could. God, I did all that I knew to do. When we start giving it all of, of our reasons why, but yet we're producing sour grapes rather than the grapes God wants, we have missed because here, here, here it says that God expected grapes from the vineyard. Okay. Now one of the grapes that God wanted, you keep reading, you'll discover that the grapes that God wanted was justice and righteousness. Uh -huh. God wanted his people to live according to justice and be righteous. Now, now, now we, what he got was, what he got was wild grapes. Right. He didn't get what he wanted, he got wild grapes. Wild grace right here is, is God says what you gave me was bloodshed and the crying of the oppressed. So, so I wanted justice and righteousness. I wanted you to live holy before me, but what you produced, Vineyard, was, was bloodshed, the slaying of the innocent, and the crying of the oppressed. The crying of the abused. Now, before we go straight to, to, to the situation in the land, let's, 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 if you will, just for a moment, consider what God wanted as a pure grain. Okay. See, what God wanted was righteousness and justice. If you look at in your Bible, you'll discover that Old Testament and New Testament, righteousness and, 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 and justice, righteousness and, and justification are really uh, English translation of the same Hebrew and Greek words. In other words, they mean the same thing. Okay. It's just in our language, they flow differently. So in, and if you listen to it in Hebrew, if you listen to it in Greek, when they say with the word for righteous or justice, they will use the same word. Because it's pretty, it's, it comes from the, the, same, the same word. So what, what is justice? In our language, in, in our understanding, justice is fairness in the courts. Justice is equity out here. You treat this person this way, you treat that person the same way, that's justice. If you don't write me a ticket, you write them a ticket, we're driving the same speed. That's justice. In our mind, that's justice. But when you look at the Bible, justice and righteousness is a 
shall life live with equity, equity according to the will and the purpose of God. In other words, it's not about fear, it's about God. Am I living according to the will of God? Is the will of God being exercised in my life? So I can be fair in the courtroom and unjust before God. Mm. I can be righteous in the courtroom and unrighteous before God. Because what we declare is righteous, what we declare is justice, is based upon our human understanding of fairness and equity. God says righteousness and justice begins with my word and my will. If you're living against my will, if you're not living out my word, then it's not just or righteous. So when we give God excuses to go against his will, we're really just wearing a big leaf to say, I already broke your law. <laughs> because we're trying to come into the place. Yeah. And God, it's right there, y'all. God said, God is telling us what you're asking me. You see, because God has expectation. He told us yeah. Yeah. what he wants. Now, 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 look, look at the video. Look at it. Look, look a little bit closer at the video. And what you will see is, is that, that, that God holds each of us accountable for the fruit that we produce. Okay. Amen. It, it, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not the, the thing that you do. It's the, 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 the ground that you produce the thing from. All right. yeah. If you look at the text, God doesn't condemn. God doesn't challenge. God doesn't rebuke the sour grapes, the poisonous fruit. God deals with the vineyard. God says, I work in the vineyard. It's the vineyard that produced the grapes. See, we go around looking at what the deed, look at what he did, look at what I said. I did my best. We look at the deed. God said, but what about the vineyard? It's the vineyard that God holds accountable. It's the vineyard that God says, I did my work in you. I gave you all the effort. I put all my love in you. So it's in that vineyard that God, God holds each and every one of us accountable for the fruit that we produce. So when I say I mean because they treated me nasty, that don't work. When I say I don't pay my tithe because I, gotta, I, 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 I messed up and I paid too much money over here, that don't work. You see, because we're dealing with the deed. We're dealing with the sour grape. We're saying it's the fruit that's bad. And God said, yes, the fruit is bad. But the question is, why did the vineyard produce it? Why did the vineyard produce the fruit that is bad? It's right there. I hope y'all can see it with me. It's right there. It's right there. It's right there with me. The vineyard, the vineyard produced it. Back to that other step. Let's take a look at the vineyard, please. The vineyard produced the fruit that did not require God. See, the wild grape didn't require any kind of cultivation. Wild grape didn't require any kind of love and attention. Wild grape didn't require that the vine dresser pay attention to it and prepare for it. Wild grape can be reproduced in any kind of soil. So un unattended soil, unredeemed soil, unregenerated soil, un un undelivered soil can produce wild grace. Wild grace is produced as no one rejects the love that's being offered. Uh -huh. Wild grace don't require God. So when we get ahead and we want what the world wants, and we act like the world acts, and we respond like the world responds, we just wild grace. We would act as though no God doesn't matter. What God said doesn't matter. What I'm going through is so bad. I can cancel what God said. What they mean so mean and nasty. I ain't got to pay attention to God right now. So we produce wild grapes. Wild grapes. Wild grapes is in the vineyard that God labored to prepare. Wild grapes don't require the hand of God, the touch of God, the love of God. Wild grapes that that there that will grow no matter what anyone do or don't do. Wild grapes. So what does that say? That says that when we 
Produce wild grapes out of the vineyard that God has claimed as his own. We're denying the presence and the activities of God. God, God don't, we're, we're pretending, we're acting as if God's love don't make no difference in our lives. We, 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 we're living as though God's promises don't apply in our lives. We're living as though God's grace somehow doesn't take root in our lives. If I live always afraid, then I live as though God is not a protector. If I live, I always talk about how broke I am. I live like God ain't a provider. If I live always criticizing and angry at folks over there, I live like God ain't a forgiver. I live like wild grapes. I just can't get over what they did to me. The question they did or what they did. The question is, who is God in your life, baby? If I can't get over, if I can't deal with, if I can't live what God has brought to me, it's not the thing that's the problem. It is the God that I see in my life. God, can you give me over this? God, can you deliver me from that? God, can you restore my joy? Is what they did so powerful that they, 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 they don't allow God not to be able to restore joy? Is they, did they cut you so deep that God is unable to heal? Did they break your heart in so many pieces God doesn't know how to put it back together again? Are, are you so broke that God can't provide for you? Are you so bad that the grace of God can't forgive you? You see, that, 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 that's, it's not the thing. It's the vineyard. It's the vineyard. So God said, look, take some introspection here. Okay. Look at yourself. Then you take a peek. See, because if you haven't figured it out by now, what, what we should know at this point is that the very people to whom God is speaking are the vineyard that God is speaking of. God is talking to the vineyard about itself. Okay. And, and so when we stand there, we, we have to take some introspection. We have to ask ourselves some, some serious questions. And the serious question we have to ask ourselves is, is the question that God is asking here is, what more could God have done? What more could God do? What more, what more in your life can God do? Well, we say, I need more of God. Where is there more of God that God has already given? Come on, yeah. how, how do you know that there's more of God than that? Come on, here. You can't, you, I, I can't conceive all the God that God has made known to me. Okay. So how do you know? See, introspection caused them to, to now take a look. And God asked them a question. God said, look, two questions. God says, what, what, what more could I have done? I did all that I could do. I did, I, I prepared my for you. What more? What more could I have done? You, you see, you've got that one thing that creates a problem in your life. What, can I, what more can I do to help you get over that? Okay. What more can I do to, to make you strong enough to handle it? Okay. What more do you need from God to walk past the thing that had you in crippled and broke down for so many years? What more do you need from God to be able to trust? What more should God do? That's what he asked the question. He said, I knew. What more could I do? And the obvious question to return the question is, God, you didn't know what none else for you to do? You did it all. You gave me everything I need. You done it all for me. So then God asked the second question. So why do you keep giving me sour grace? Why do you give me grace that I don't desire? If I've already done it all, if I've already provided for you, if I've already made a way out of nowhere, if I've already given you the victory, I've already fought your battle, if I've already done it, why do you keep giving me sour grapes? Remember what sour grapes are. Sour grapes is that you're going against God's will. Sour grace is not living your life according to God's will and God's purpose in this word. Sour grace is the, the excuses that you make not to give God what he wants or what I'll get there soon. Sour grace is the justification that we get and we make for ourselves so we don't have to change it. We get to be holy. That's sour grace. God says, why? Why do you still 
still me. Why? Why do you still treat people like that? Why? Why do you still speak hateful words out of your mouth? Why do you still judge folk? Why do you still don't get pay your tithes? Why? If I've done all that I can do, if I've been everything that you need in your life, if there's nothing else I can do, I've done it all so that you can produce good grapes. I've done it all so you can be just and justified and righteous. I've done it all for you already. Why? Why do you keep on mistreating my people? Why? Why do you keep justifying going to the park but not to church? Why? Just 
will is straight to go on. I'll put it in there. Look inside of you. God put choice vines. And then God said, no, I built inside of you a watchtower. The watchtower was built in the center of the vineyard. And it's where, it's where the wine dresser would come climb and hire people to fair watch over the vineyard to make sure that everything's growing right. If there's a part of the vineyard that needs extra water, you can see it from the watchtower. If there's a part of the vineyard where the fence was broken down and folks could come in and steal, you can see it from the watchtower and you can go fix it. The watchtower made sure nobody was breaking in. Nobody was stealing. Nobody was hurting. Nothing. God said, I put a watchtower in you. The Spirit of God dwells with us. He's the keeper of the soul. The Spirit of God watches over you. He's the one. He's a watchtower in your life. See, most of the time, what we turn down, what we run from, what we reject is God saying, build up the fence. There's a hole in it. God saying, look, put a little more water over there. You need some Bible study. You get a little dry right there. You need a little time in prayer. That part right there ain't got there. Ain't got enough sunlight. You need some prayer time. You see, that's what, and we think that, like, I do my best. And you are ignoring the watch tower that's telling you there's something going awry in your life. Yeah. Yeah. Go fix it. Go address it. Uh -huh. I put a watch tower there. Yeah. And then I show you my confidence that I have in you. I know what I put in you. I know what you're capable of. Okay. Okay. I've got confidence in you. So therefore, I'm going to heal, not just not build a wooden one. I'm going to hew out of the mountain, hew in the stone, a place where when you bring wine, I'll be able to squeeze out the spirit that's in your life. Yeah. And it will flow. Yeah. It will flow to others. Yeah. I, I'm going to put a wine press yeah. in the center. God yeah. says, I know what you can produce. I'm ready for your spirit to spread. Yeah. I'm, ready, I'm, ready, I'm, ready, I'm ready for others to drink of the juice that's produced for your life. Ready. And then God said, but at harvest, mm. all you gave me was wild grapes. Woo! All that I did, okay. front of the hill, mm. well. breaking up the, 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 the side, breaking up the ground, oh. throwing out the rocks, oh. planting choice vines in you. Woo! My purpose, my goal, my desire. So that nobody can break in and steal with you unaware. Oh, yeah. And prepare for you to be used to bless the kingdom Glory. as the juice flows from your life. Yeah. I took all of that for you, didn't you? Yeah. So please tell me <laughs> why do you keep producing? So I ask God to question us this way. What is it that you think God got to do for you more additionally, in addition to what he has already done before you can produce the grace that God desires?
you are for? What you asking? Are you still want that one thing? Or you realize that the one thing is a fig leaf that needs to be replaced by animal skins? That's that's Adam and Eve if you didn't know. Alright. Praise God. Praise God. That's it. That's it.
We're not perfect here, but we are growing and trying to be a people who are maturing in the love of Christ. God bless you. God bless you.